Savannah, Georgia, one of the most significant historic cities in the United States, with much of its original architecture still intact and being repurposed today. At the cornerstone of Savannah's historic district, hotelier Richard Kessler is transforming the city's century-old power plant into a vibrant five-building hotel, retail, entertainment complex. Hello, I'm Richard Kessler. I'm the president and chairman of the Kessler Collection. And now, welcome to Plant Riverside. Since 1912, this whole strategic piece of real estate has been enclosed in a fence that public could not come to. The 700 jobs that they estimate there are going to be, the number of people that will be making $22,000 or better versus a minimum wage, it's just a win-win for the community. That people have certain images when they go to a place, they want to fulfill this dream, they project ahead, and they want to fulfill that dream when they go there. So what we're trying to do is build facilities that fulfills their dream. Look at the steel that's in this thing. You don't see steel like this anymore. This plant was built to be here. I think that story of power here is really significant in that mm -hmm. sense. So mm -hmm. Savannah was a city willing to embrace a new technology. Plant Riverside has played a very important part of the history in Savannah since 1912. As you know, in a power plant like this, the purpose is to create electricity, produce electricity. Now, what we're creating in Plant Riverside is a different kind of electricity. For many years, the west side of the city, West Savannah as it's fondly called, has been neglected. And this project, frankly, can be the leader in that reconnectivity, bringing this area into the fold, uh, so to speak. With a project with this magnitude in the heart of the historic district of Savannah, it is a great responsibility. Being from Savannah, Georgia, and, and feeling a very close, um, a very close emotional connection and pride of being from Savannah, I've taken tremendous amount of energy and interest in this project. From the very beginning, uh, I started looking for the right architect. Well, certainly I wanted an architect from Savannah, Georgia to be a part of that architectural group. Well, my name is Christian Sotil. I'm an architect and an educator, and I practice here in Savannah. And our firm, Sotil & Sotil, focuses on urbanism and architecture, always with civic ideals as our highest priority. Christian is a brilliant architect, and he and I have worked so closely in envisioning the details of how does it fit in appropriately to Savannah? How does it fit in appropriately to River Street? Today, 13 million visitors a year come to visit Savannah, and they all come to the river. They come to see where it all started. And I think it's one of the reasons so many people travel from around the world just to be here, just to experience a little bit of this. The very site of the power plant was the first port of Savannah. That story changes in the 20th century as the Savannah electric uh, power plant is developed down here on the river, Plant Riverside. We see that port disappear and we see access to the river in this location disappear. It was immediately apparent to us that the very first thing we needed to do was reconnect it to the city. And working with the city of Savannah, the idea of connecting nearly 1,400 feet of river walk creates a web of pedestrian movement. First off, we get a, we get a parking area. That's, I mean, that's, you know, the elementary as it is, we need parking down on the west end of uh, River Street. So what we're doing here at Plant Riverside will absolutely transform the future of River Street. And thank goodness someone had the foresight to build a beautiful edifice that today can be repurposed and used and still be a part of an active growing city. The historic power plant could in itself be an entire history lesson in architecture. It represents a century's worth of architectural thought and technology. So the design all begins here in the generator hall of the power plant, a space that is like an industrial cathedral. It's a space 
that has an incredible proportion, a space larger than you might imagine could exist in Savannah. And I think there's no question that the energy of this space drives everything that we think about. And the team very quickly coalesced around the idea that you play it as it lies. And as we look at this space, we see this amazing lacework of steel trusses that span across the ceiling, 65 feet overhead. We have this absolutely gorgeous steel skylight that allows natural light down into the space that was the original form of lighting within the space. It, the building is created with an enormous network of steel girders and beams and braces. As much as you see it as a masonry building on the exterior, the interior is entirely woven together with steel. Now much of that steel will need to be removed, but much of it will remain in place and becomes part of how we experience it in the future. So in a guest room, for example, you may have a diagonal steel brace just moving right through the space. So this is old 19, from 1900 to 1930 technology. There are some amazing hidden places inside this building. In fact, some rooms have the remains of these beautiful brick fins that were actually part of how the busing gear, the electrical switching gear that would distribute electricity would have their circuits separated. So it's the kind of architecture you've just never seen before. Those spaces will be reinterpreted as very intimate spaces that will be enjoyed by people for the first time. Dining rooms, private dining rooms and restaurants, some of the bar spaces will get to use those. You can imagine wine rooms, using these thin brick fins that were set in place 100 years ago for an entirely different purpose. If it had been hot and you wouldn't close it, you'd see a little arc and flash right there. Elements like this are not just retained, but really showcased. That idea of adaptive reuse um, with a light touch uh, is gonna be evident throughout the design. At the sixth level of the building, there's a natural terrace created there that opens into a large volume with over 30 foot high ceilings that will become a rooftop venue, a restaurant bar space that naturally opens up to a terrace which has some of the best vistas up the channel, up the river. You can see freighters coming in uh, as they enter the Savannah River Channel and come toward the city. We are right at the bend of the river so that wherever we are here, it's like the boats are coming right at you from either direction. This the, the awesome scale of those ships as they pass by in this very close proximity. So I can't think of another place that you have a better vantage. Oh, I can see live music here and oh, just so much entertainment right in this space. Back when I was in college at Georgia Tech uh, and thought about developments and what I wanted to do, I was always intrigued by theme parks. So finally, in a sense, this is my theme park. And we look at everything we're doing here as entertainment, some kind of activity ongoing all the time, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's magicians, whatever it is, we want some type of entertainment happening here at Plant Riverside. So the master plan envisions this district in a very complete way. The renovation of the historic power plant, the addition of Plant Riverside West and parking resources associated with that. We have the addition of a new hotel operating at a, at a smaller, finer grain scale, the Three Muses to the east. All of these buildings become part of the activation of the riverfront experience, but over an acre and a half of land is designed into a series of plazas and experiences, and none of it will be boring. So what do we want that person to feel when they walk in the door? And we want that aha moment. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch people when they walk in there because there's no way you can appreciate the size and the vast vastness of that place until you walk to that front door and look up and look down. It's gonna blow, it's just gonna blow people's mind when they walk in that door. Plant Riverside Project is not just a corporate project, honestly. It's a personal project to me. I've been in this business now for some 46 years of developing hotels around the country. This will be my seventh hotel in the historic district here in Savannah, Georgia. A project like this requires city participation and city involvement. Just think of the dozens of approvals that we had to get. And the city has been so responsive and helpful. 
it could not be possible without such a supportive community effort. So to the city, I say thank you, and thank you for your good leadership. You will not be disappointed. This project at $250 million is definitely the largest investment, private investment in the history of the city. Plant Riverside is a game changer for Savannah. The magnitude of this project is beyond comprehension for me. What it's gonna do for the city, what it's gonna do for the citizens here is a very, very big deal. So with those large goals in mind, and, and I think Richard as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a developer, as a civic advocate, has consistently through his career seen things when others hadn't seen them yet. And I think Richard saw that immediately with this site, that this was more than a power plant, it was more than a majestic old building, it was more than a great site on the river, but this really was the cornerstone of Savannah's future. And I think it's very personal. This project really brings to bear an entire career's worth of learning and imagining. And it brings it to a project that is perhaps the greatest canvas of all. I look forward to the next two years. I look forward to the opening day. It's going to be a great time. And I hope you'll feel the electricity, the, the spark, the inspiration of this place. Thank you.